Hey guys and girls, how's it going? Uh, Mark here again and today we're in for an awesome adventure because we're not going to stay here in the studio. We're going to very very soon get into the van, drive to the middle of Okinawa, uh, oh, well, the middle of the eastern coastline of Okinawa because tonight it looks like the weather's going to be awesome, the forecast is fantastico and uh, we're going to head up with the ambition or with the goal of shooting a wonderful panorama of the Milky Way as it starts to emerge uh, above the horizon. We're now into the month of April so thankfully the Milky Way season is upon us again. Uh, I'll be starting to shoot the Milky Way in earnest on a monthly basis uh, hoping to get some wonderful panoramas this year and tonight I'm actually going to be doing a technique that's new to me uh, so I want to take you on the journey to see hit or miss if it's a miss, we'll just have to do it again, uh, but if it's a hit, it should be awesome. So uh, without further ado, let's spare not the horses and let's jump in our car and let's head up to the east coast of Okinawa. See you when we get there. Hey guys, well we finally made it up to the uh, northeastern coast of Okinawa. Uh, it's a beautifully clear night and the Milky Way is just over on the horizon. Uh, just starting to come into view, which gives me a bit of time to be able to talk with you guys and just go through exactly what it is I'm hoping to accomplish today or this evening. Um, I'm, I'm going to be aiming to shoot a uh, panorama of the Milky Way uh, using my trusted EOS 5DSR. Uh, and uh, the lens I'm going to be using is a Sigma 35mm f1.4 ART. Uh, it's the art series. Um, but more so for me, uh, what I want to do is to try a filter that I've been sent by the wonderful people at Canny Optics. It is in fact uh, a filter that is called the Prevent Light Pollution Filter. Okay, and you can see it there. You might be able to see it. Okay, it's a bit of an opaque kind of color, purplish kind of color. Uh, and what this does apparently is it reduces the amount of overbearing halogen glow uh, that you get, especially coming from um, urbanizations above cities, villages, that kind of stuff, if you're shooting above those. Now, the panorama that I want to shoot to one of the extremities, uh, there is a village on the coastline uh, that may encroach uh, with the light pollution. So hopefully uh, we'll be testing this out and seeing what, our, seeing what it yields. Uh, hopefully we'll have, a, at the end of the evening, a very successful shoot. Um, now, in order for that to sit on my camera lens, 67mm filter thread. So I've got a step-up ring, which is uh, 67 to 82, okay, because the filter holder I'm going to be using is uh, by default 82 millimeters. So that just goes into there. Okay, and then the mounting ring or the adapter ring for the filter holder screws into that. Ooh. There we go. And then the uh, canny filter holder, there's a couple of little shoulders at the back here. They just clip over this clip and then the pull out uh, spring loaded mechanism here that just pulls out and fits back over the lip on the other side. And there you go. Very easy, very quick. Um, and then the, le the filter, okay, just sits in the closest filter tray to the camera lens. Hold on, there we go. There we go. For the tripod I'm going to be using tonight, this is the from uh, Leo Photo. It's the Ranger LS324 uh, three, three, CEX, uh, carbon fiber, absolutely beautiful, uh, beautiful piece of kit. Um, three main leg elements, okay, but it stands almost six feet tall. It's, uh, it's a sturdy old beast. Um, and coming from a uh, video background, predominantly video background, I much prefer to have the uh, quick uh, leveling uh, ball head uh, on a tripod, which is what I've got on this system. You can have it just with a regular uh, tripod head if you want. Um, but what do I mean by that? If the camera is off kilter, you get it, you put, you deploy your, your tripod. If it's not exactly level, there's a little lever at the back here. You can undo that. And here you can see you've got a lot of play that you can then take up and level it very, very quickly using a, uh, a spirit level here. Okay, that will get it nice and level. The other aspect of this, um, of, of this particular system is that it's got this nice uh, graticuled ring for the rotation. Okay, you've got the brake for that here. And then as I'm gonna be 
photographing through different increments of 15 degrees this evening. Okay, all I need to do is release the brake and then rotate between each one of the graticles here that's marked. Uh, each one of the graticles in between that area, each one of the, uh, or each gradical between themselves are two and a half degrees. So between the two numerical values, you've got 15 degrees. And that makes my job a lot easier this evening because I'm just going to be rotating the camera through 15 degrees. So I know I just need to line up with each numerical value as I go. So hopefully an easy task ahead of me tonight. All I can do now is uh, get out onto the beach. Uh, now there is one thing, sorry, I, I did forget to mention. There is one thing. I'm going to be shooting 80 photographs and throughout that whole time, it's, I'm expecting it to take me about between 18 and 20 minutes. Now, some people may be wondering, well, isn't the Earth going to rotate too much that you're not going to be able to, you, you, the stars won't align by the time you've taken your, or in, in, in between taking your first shot and your last shot? Uh, with the software that I'm using, using for the edit, which is called uh, Starry Landscape Stacker, um, allows you a time frame of up to 40 minutes uh, and it's capable of being able to realign all of the, the stars within a landscape and without blurring any landscape elements or the terrestrial elements that may be in the shot um, so you've got that whole leeway of 40 minutes to take your take your panorama so uh, no rush no headache uh, just diligently go through each shot and hopefully we'll come out with the other side with a with a great image so I'm going to go and get over onto the beach now, get ready to start shooting uh, and I will pick up with you again in the studio when we come to the edit. All right guys, take care. Well, hey guys, uh, what a night that was, pretty awesome. Um, but the, the night skies themselves were just incredible. Um, Okay, well, it's the following day, and I'm now just I'm I'm in Lightroom looking at the images. Um, I'll be honest with you, I think I made a bit of a boo boo, um, but let's just go through the the edit. What I did do in order to try and um, be successful at this, um, I, I shot two panoramas. One was the one um, that I was talking about the the panorama with the two columns so you had a lower pan a lower panorama with the two columns you had a first column at the base four images i actually ended up shooting four images not five just to win a bit of time um, so four images in each zone each each uh, position of that first column at the lower part and then shifted up by 15 degrees and done the second column came back along the exact same position albeit 15 degrees with elevation um, along that same that mirroring the bottom column all of the zones in the bottom column um, i think there may have been a little bit of rotation on the uh on the tripod as i moved uh, because I had a look at a couple of the zones and the the horizon doesn't quite match up but anyway I'm happy to put up, put my hand up and say maybe I, I cocked this one up, but uh, we'll see. We're going to go through the edit, not of the two row ones, but of the single row ones. Um, I think one problem that I learned as well is that when I got to location, I started talking to you guys, taking you through all of the, the bits and pieces. And by the time I actually got to start shooting the Milky Way, it had risen uh, more so than I had thought it would have done. Um, so let's go through it anyway, and let's see exactly how things turned out. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be using a very specific um, uh, technique with regards to this edit. Um, and I'm gonna be using a mixture of Lightroom, which you can see open, and another program down here, which is called uh, Starry Landscape Stacker. Now at the moment, this only works with Mac. I'm not aware of this software working with um, PC at the moment. I may be wrong. If there, if it is, in fact, I'll leave a comment down below uh, with a link uh, if it exists, and therefore you'll be able to uh, take, check it out if you so desire. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into, into the computer and I'll take you through the edit. All right, folks, here we are in, uh, in Lightroom. Okay, and these were all, all of the images that I shot that night of the uh, Milky Way of the uh, stack from last night 
Okay, and in total I believe there's about 154 images, something crazy. Um, but unfortunately the uh, double stack that I wanted to, or the, the double row uh, stack, uh, did end up a bit wonky. Um, operator error, I'll, I'll put my hand up and uh, claim ownership of that. Um, I did actually just make a boo-boo and I think either I moved the tripod a little bit and the, um, the horizon just went a, a bit wonky. So uh, unfortunately, uh, these are the only images that we're going to be working with today, but this is sufficient for a stack. These are all of the images um, from a single row, a second, the, se the second shoot that I done, which was a single row of uh, 10 zones with four images in each one of those zones. Okay. Uh, now the first thing I done is I selected all of the images. I went into the develop mode and quite simply I enabled the profile correction and as you can see is the Sigma 35mm f1.4 uh, DG HSM. Okay? Um, once that was done I went back into library and this is where it all comes down now to the man management. Um, we take each of those sectors and all of the images per sector. So for example these first four here and then what I need to do is I need to export these images uh, into a folder. Now I've done actually all of this already just to save time but I'm going to go through everything with you. Um, I save it all as TIFF, Adobe RGB so I can access 16-bit components. I leave everything at 300 dpi so super huge files uh, and when I'm ready then I would create, let's say for example I was creating the, the folder where I wanted to um, where I want to keep those images. As you can see, I've got a master file uh, called the Cayo Pano, it's Cayo Beach. Um, and I've then got each zone for each one of the um, areas where I took the photos. And in each one of these zones, I've got the component images uh, that are relative to, to that zone. Okay, all of which need to be stacked in order to create a master and it's the, master, the single master files from each one of those zones that we are eventually going to use to create our panorama. All right, so there we go. You can see that I've done all of these before just to save time because it is a bit of a, a time consuming uh, task. But uh, let's go ahead now as if we had um, exported those images. Okay, and I will then, so we would take these four, Im <coughs> excuse me, we'd take these four images when that was exported, take the next four, so on and so forth, all the way up to the last image, which is the, or the last batch, which are these four right here. Okay, once we've finished that final uh, images, we sent them off to their master folder. We come down here and we're going to open up our starry landscape stacker. Um, and then we're going to find, navigate to the folder where we the master folder which is Cayo Pano, Cayo Beach and there you'll see we've got each one of the zones folders which each of one each one of which will contain the stack of four images for that particular zone okay now we're going to work with zone seven just to show you how this all works we're going to work with the four images in this um, folder so quite simply we select all of those images and press open Do, 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 do. Come on, Starry Landscape Stacker, let's go. Open, what's going on? Okay, so it's reading those four images, step one of two. Now they are big images, uh, they're 300 and 301 megabytes each. Okay, now the first thing that you'll notice in this is that the stars look very, very uh, elongated and there's just a mahoosive amount of noise, uh, especially down here in the uh, horizon area. Okay, just above the horizon. Um, don't worry about the way that the stars look. There's a lot of star trails there. Um, but what um, the program is trying to do is to identify all of the stars in all of the images in order to be able to stack them uh, nice and easy okay in the final render um, and what you have to do or what you can do um, is you start with automatic dots okay and you can add red dots okay or erase red dots because the dots are where the program thinks the stars are so let's go ahead and mark the more prominent ones that seem to have been min mi mi let's go ahead and mark the more prominent ones that seem to have been missed this may take a while, so I'll speed this up. 
Da, 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 da. So from this audio on, you can just get rid of it because this is where I am doing the it's a lot of really prominent stars that have been missed. Look at this, it's huge. Any other biggies? Yeah, that's quite big, isn't it? Let's keep that one. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Okay, well now that we've marked all of the main stars that we're, we are interested in, what you'll notice over here also they've got a, uh, an option to erase red dots. Now sometimes what happens, especially down here uh, in the ocean, uh, you may find, uh, or, or anywhere that isn't in the sky, maybe on a, on a rock feature, you might find when the image opens, uh, little red dots like this that the program has, that they may be hot pixels, dead pixels, or it may just be that there's something that's reflecting from the island or from whatever it is that's on the, um, that wh where that red dot is con uh, contained that is not a star, but the, the software is reading it as if it's a star. So quite simply, all you would do is opt for erase red dots and just take that eraser as you would any other eraser tool and just get rid of the erroneous stars okay um, once that's done okay what you do then is you would go here and you would say find sky now what's going to happen the software is going to run a mask okay and it's going to overlay that mask in what it believes is the sky now you can see that it's missed out quite a bit here in the bottom um, and that's just because there's so much noise uh, in that above horizon area that it's kind of like wondering where is the land, where's the, uh, where's the sea, uh, where is the sky. Now what you can do, okay, is you can then paint the sky option with your brush. You're going to paint in the areas of the mask that are missing. Okay, it doesn't have to be, it can be as fantastic or as close in as you like. For this tutorial, I'm going to go a little bit quick, quicker than I should maybe. But thankfully, this rock isn't that jogged, uh, jagged, so we can come around it quite quickly, quite nicely. And you'll notice that, thankfully, the horizon is nicely defined. There we go. And then, if you want to make a larger brush, you can quite simply hold down Command and open bracket, as you would in Lightroom or Photoshop. And then that increases the size of the brush, and it just gets the job done a lot faster. Okay, so let's just colour this bit in. Do, 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 do. Okay, a little bit missing that. And then let's just fill this in here. Okay. Now there you go, I'm happy with that. That is all the, the sky masked in my opinion. It looks wonderful. Okay, and you, you've also got a, a brush command here if you want to go use that um, in size, uh, depending on your preference. If you want to use keyboard shortcuts or the commander here, no worries. Okay, now when we're done, we simply go with align and composite. And now the software is going to go through all of the images in that composite and piece them together. The image that you come up with here is just going to be the top image from the composite. So that you're not going to see the result here. You'll see the result a little bit later when we open it up in Lightroom. Okay, there we go. So it still does look quite incredibly grainy. Okay. And do, 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 do. And what I'm going to do there is I'm going to save that. 
I'm gonna it's already in zone 7 I'm gonna give it a name uh, zone 7 because this will be in the master folder and save now what also um, the f software does is I gave it a master and I saved it and you saw immediately it came down with this save box again because what it does is it will also save a mask of the sky okay so the mask that we've that we commanded the uh, the software to create it's created a mask of that should we need it uh, down the line for any composite imaging attempts that we wish to try in the future well that was a long job <laughs> finally I'm back in um, Lightroom and I've got all of each one of the uh, stacked zone masters uh, here along the time uh, in the library um, but what I've also done just to, uh, just to show you guys uh, the difference I've taken two of the images from I believe zone 7 okay and let's compare the uh, noise levels that we have in the two and there you can see the noise is greater reduced in the image here with the four stacked image uh, as opposed to the, one of the single images uh, from that zone okay um, especially down have a look down in the ocean boom big big difference there look on the uh, on, on the island on the rock on the vegetation especially you get all of this um, little dots and, and noise on the vegetation whereas here uh, it's pretty much non-existent okay it's not perfect but it's a uh, night and day difference um, awesome and so from there let's just come out let's go back to the group view and I'm going to get rid of this uh, image which was the raw image from that zone okay so now there are two options we've got we can either use Lightroom to stack the panorama or we can use um, Photoshop for ease of use I'm going to do it very simply uh, here we select all of the images okay we've got that we go up here to photo photo merge and panorama all right and now Lightroom is going to chug through all of its uh, settings it's going to line up as best it can to um, align the images it's going to take a bit of a while so let's let it get on with that there we go and now once it's um, created the stack all it does is it, it will render the file and give you the uh, an overview of the image here we are and it's looking pretty good and uh, let's go ahead and merge that And there we go here you can see we've got the uh, panorama here let's just check that out all right you can see there are some imperfections here especially on the ocean here something here doesn't really line up so got a bit of um bit of work to do i think in photoshop but we'll go and adjust that shortly awesome okay well I mean this is the base layer okay you can see that the Milky Way the the, um, the panorama looks good okay this is the area to the right where there is going to be that bit of um, light pollution and it seems to have handled that nicely um, I'm not particularly happy with this as an example for that filter so it looks like we're going to go and do that shoot that again um, which is good if we can find an vantage point that's got a better more stable ground I think we'll get a better result at the end of the day I'm going to go and fix this in Photoshop and uh, I will be back with you very soon okay and here it is this is the uh, master and you can see around here because I had to realign the, the ocean um, I'm not a, an absolute whiz at uh, Photoshop but you can see here there's a few little bits and pieces uh, artifacts that maybe detract from the image uh, but um, it is what it is at this time this for me is a journey of discovery it's an absolutely new experience for me to shoot this kind of imagery so as a first effort I'm actually quite happy with it that um, there are failings but that's good because that gives me a benchmark to work from and the good thing is we learn from our mistakes okay so if everything is just perfect all the time it gets a bit boring and I wouldn't want to be one of these people that just do things perfectly all the time so happy in my failings uh, but from here we can go ahead and quickly uh, develop this uh, image 
uh, make a few changes just to spruce it up a little bit uh, see if we can make it look a little bit better as you'll see there is quite a, an orange tinge to it okay I want to just uh, let's warm that down or let's cool that down just a little bit get a bit more blue in the sky there we go exposure is fine contrast maybe just a little bit of contrast okay um, highlights we can boost the highlights a bit to bring out the white uh, and also a little bit on the shadows but uh, okay let's tell you what let's come down on the highlights but go up with the whites so the only thing that we're pumping up really are the, are the bright parts that's cool uh, blacks can stay there for the moment if we want to punch a bit more clarity into the image we can slide up the clarity slider um, but the good thing the, the one thing that I like to do oh, it takes a while because it's such a heavy image uh, is just punch up to make the stars stand up stand out a bit with the old uh, D haze okay let's just leave that at 50 that unfortunately um, just really kind of exposes the artifacts of the edit that I made here but again like I said it's a learning point a learning curve so let's just see if we can brighten up the la land a little bit okay just a very quick image a very quick edit I'm afraid um, like I said a few little errors here but we learn from that I've learned from it um, next time we go out we will learn or, or we will in, you know shoot uh, with the lessons that we've learned today and hopefully uh, that will stand us in better stead uh, just wanted to say a big thank you guys uh, I understand there's a lot of content out there on YouTube that you could uh, busy yourself with but the fact that you uh, choose to look at my content uh, I very very much appreciate that. Uh, I just wanted to say a very quick thanks to a, a buddy of mine, uh, Max from the Scuttlebutt Show. He's actually uh, helping me film this tonight. I dragged, it, dragged him out to the beaches of, of Okinawa uh, to give me a hand to shoot this. Uh, using uh, we're actually filming for those interested, filming on a, a Sony A7S2 with a Zeiss 85 a Zeiss Milvus uh, f1.4. So trying to trying to get the uh, focus sorted on that can be a bit of a pain in the butt at the best of times so uh, cheers Max for doing that he runs a, uh, a video blog from Okinawa uh, it's called the Scuttlebutt Show and I'll link to that in the description down below um, but from my family guys to yours I want to wish you all the best please be safe be healthy uh, stay distant but not from the channel obviously um, Please do check back uh, from time to time. I'm getting uh, content up and running, uh, hopefully once, twice a week at the moment. Uh, so hopefully that will keep going. Um, please, like I said, take care. All the best. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notifications bell and you'll be notified as and when there's new content from yours truly.